Welcome everybody to Wager Talk today. I am Lawrence Pressman. I'm freezing cold. We have no water in our house, no shower, wearing a cap, but ready to go. What a show we got for you guys. Not the biggest slate of bets available tonight, but Marco D'Angelo is going to look at the Sacramento Kings at New Orleans Pelicans. That's tomorrow. He's also going to take apart the Miami uh, and Cubs game. Ralph Michaels on with one NHL bet and two outstanding charts. And that's it. Two guests. Teddy's big game breakdown. The draft. A bet for the NFL draft. Teddy covers. Joining me like always, my co-host looking good. Marco D'Angelo right off the bat. What up, Marco? Should we start a GoFundMe account for you so you can pay the water bill and <laughs> get a shower? We, we have a leak. We have a leak in the house. Uh, and it sucks, dude. Like, uh, yeah, couldn't. The way I made a coffee today, I had to walk around the house looking for uh, glasses with like half full water, uh, which I did <laughs> succeed. So I got my coffee in. Uh, and I was able to brush my teeth, but that's it. Yes, Teddy, I know. I, like This is uh, but... just getting grosser. At first, you're talking about you're, you're not showering and coming on the show. Now you're talking about finding <laughs> dregs of water to make your coffee with. Can we please not talk about your gross habits and possibly move uh, to Marco's analysis? And Marco, you want to start in MLB for today. A light card, but there are two games tonight. One is the Miami Marlins at the Chicago Cubs. Right now, look at the way you talk live on stream. Juice to the under, eight under minus 25 full game total in, uh, sorry, uh, for the total, seven and a half popping up. And of course, from a side standpoint, we're seeing the Cubs in the minus 155, minus 160 range. If you're interested in the first five wager where the line is more like minus 150, the total sitting at four. What are we going to do with the first five innings, Cubs and Marlins? Well, Teddy, we are going to go first five innings, but uh, read a little further. Minus a half a run. We're bringing it down to minus 110. We're not laying the 150 there. Uh, and what I'm looking at here, uh, the Cubs send out uh, Jamison Taylor for his first start of 2024. And he's coming. He started the season on the injury list. And while most people don't like to take a pitcher in his first start um, coming back from an injury, I am just the opposite. I like to take that pitcher, and I'll tell you why, Teddy. This is a spot where, as far as the pitcher goes, you know you're going to get him locked in mentally, ready to go for that first start coming off an injury. Now, I will say this wasn't a serious injury. He tweaked his back in spring training, and they went to the cautious side, put him on the injured list, uh, let him heal, and then come back and make that start. But the thing is, you would not bring a pitcher back, a veteran pitcher, uh, that's a, a vital part of your rotation if he wasn't ready. And as I said, the mental part of the game, he is going to be ready for that first start. Uh, also, the reason why I'm going to look first five innings is if I'm taking a pitcher off an injury list, he's going to be on a pitch count, Teddy. So I don't want to have my guy do exactly what I expect him to do and then hand the ball over to the bullpen and have them screw it up. There's nothing more frustrating in baseball than uh, handicapping the the starting pitchers correctly. So this is definitely a first five inning wager for me. And then we look at who he's going against. In the Miami pitcher, A.J. Uh, Puck, you might want to put an E on the end of his name and just make it A.J. Puke because he has just been <laughs> downright awful this season. He's had three starts. He's pitched a grand total of 10 and two-thirds innings in three starts, uh, meaning he hasn't made it out of the fifth inning in any of those starts. Uh, and if you look at how many guys have reached base, 26 men in 10-plus innings of work. Well, you do the math. He's putting 2.4 base runners on per game. His strikeout-to-walk ratio, eight strikeouts to 14 walks. You do not want to be giving away free passes in uh, Wrigley. Now, granted, with the over-under today, uh, the winds are blowing in, a uh, little bit different there, but still, this guy is not pitched well. So for me, I am going to go ahead and take the Cubs. I'm going to lay the half a run because I don't want to lay uh, 150 uh, on an even-up bet, and I'm going to go with Taylon to outpitch 
Puck for the first five innings in the Cubs' bats to do the job against him. Oh, Marco, Marco, Marco. Every week you come on the show and talk about these spots. You don't like the team coming back off a road trip. Not only is Chicago coming back off a road trip, they're coming back off a long road trip. They're coming back off a West Coast road trip. And they're coming back uh, having won four of their last five games, fat and happy. And they're coming back after as wild a series against Arizona as you'll ever see. I mean, crazy, grueling games against the D-backs. They don't even get a day off in between. This, to me, is your classic Marco bets the Marlins spot. And the line's kind of short, which makes me think Marco's going to bet the Marlins even more. And you have Puke <laughs> as a guy who pitched so poorly. Isn't this the start he gets it right? I mean, they're putting him out there, back out there for a reason. So talk to me about these factors for Miami, Chicago, first five today. Well, Teddy, I'll be 100% honest with you. I sat down to start doing the games last night. I circled Miami just because of the spot, because I always do that on my schedule, so I don't miss these yeah. situations coming up. And if it would if it had been any other guy starting today for the Cubs other than Taylon, I would I would obviously I would go with that scenario and take the live dog because it's almost not totally a blind play for me, but I feel because it is his first start of the season, the team's going to be up for getting him off to a good start. Uh, and I only the only times that I go against that first time at home is in a situation like this, or if it's a team that you're playing your rival, you know, that it's a really big game, you're going to be up for that team. You're not going to take them granted. So that's the reason for it. And uh, But you're right, man, you, you are paying attention. Well, when I come on these shows and throwing my own shit back at me, I love it, Teddy. That's the first cross-examination of yours that I truly appreciated. <laughs> yeah, I, I appreciate none of them ever personally, but that's a different story. <laughs> uh, guys in the chat room, guys watching our YouTube shorts, if you have questions today, uh, please uh, send them our way. We do have some extra time today as uh our third guest had uh had to cancel a last minute and with the, such a small slate we just decided to go with two uh johnny detroit puts in the chat room uh teddy on wager talk today old man yells at clouds uh that's teddy every day um and uh it's part of it's part of what makes this show so great uh a, the curmudgeon uh strikes again Marco D'Angelo, uh, outstanding run, dude. I mean, just incredible numbers for a long, long time. Uh, before we get into tomorrow night's Sacramento-New Orleans game, what do you have to promote? Well, guys, we've got a special promotion going right now. It's called my Triple Crown VIP package. And what it does, you guys know I'm a big horse racing guy. I own horses and that, and I really love the Triple Crown races, and we've been giving out prep races leading up to it. You can get all of my plays through the conclusion of the Triple Crown which the Triple Crown race, the last one is the Belmont on June 8th. So we're running the package through June 9th. That would be the Sunday, the day after. You get every play, every sport. And guys, the last four years, we're number one at Wager Talk with our NBA plays. We're currently on a 9-2 and two run with the NBA currently. You can get every play, hockey, basketball, baseball, and all three Triple Crown races for a great price. We're offering it for $349. Guys, if that's seven weeks of service. If you bought me weekly, you'd spend $700 for this package. You're getting it for $349. Head over to Wager Talk right now. Pick that package up. You'll never miss a play from now through June 9th. Awesome stuff. Uh, Teddy Marco, before we get into uh, basketball, one of our listeners, Taylor Cooper. And Taylor, I haven't seen your name before, so welcome to the show uh, i hope you've been a regular uh listener but i have not seen you comment so thank you for that we have a one o'clock game tampa bay uh angels do either of you have an opinion on it marco i did not i'm not in action on that game teddy yeah i didn't uh i i passed on the entire card today i didn't play anything i lean slightly towards la at the plus price but today wasn't a day I was looking at, you know, if I, with a, literally it was like this much of a lean. I'm like, yeah, I'm not playing that. 
Uh, but if I if I had to let's put it this way, I wouldn't lay with Tampa right now. I don't like the way Tampa's playing, and I got bullpen questions about them. Uh, yeah. This this afternoon, so it'd be Angels or pass. But as a pass for me, I didn't get an action on the game. Yeah, their their bullpen did me wonders last night. I had the Angels. We got that one done late. Another winning night for me. Uh, Marco uh, Zion Williams out. New Orleans plus one and a half. How do we bet this game? Well, the knee-jerk reaction to this game, obviously, is to grab the Kings. I mean, they look like world beaters in their blowout of the Warriors, while New Orleans, you know, loses a tough game to the Lakers, and now they're going to be without Zion. As pressive as Sacramento's win was the other night, let's not forget, they beat a Golden State team that is not as good as we want to believe the Golden State Warriors were. I mean... They're a shell of themselves. It's Steph Curry and a bunch of other guys that, you know, a couple of them are in the way back part of their careers. They don't play any defense. And, you know, the Kings, this was a big re, uh, revenge series for them. Not It was a revenge from losing the series last year. They got the job done against Golden State. That was a very satisfying win. So it would be very easy just to go ahead and grab them to win this game. But I'm not going to do that. They got to go out on the road now, and they're going to face New Orleans. The Kings hit everything they put up. And as I said, Golden State's not a good defensive ball club. They're going to face a much tougher defense in this game against New Orleans. Granted, they're not going to have Zion, but you know me. I, I like to go to the injured player theory. This is, you know, first game without the star. There's going to be an overreaction by the market, and you've seen that. This line is crossed to Sacramento being the favorite. The combination of as good as Sacramento look, they hit 46% of their three-pointers the other night against Golden State. Uh, they shot better from three than they did from two. Okay, that's not going to happen here. And I'm going to point this one out, and I know Teddy and I were on opposite sides of this game the other night, but um, maybe I'm a little bit biased, and I'm sure – Teddy will disagree with me, but the Lakers got all of the calls in that game, it seemed. Uh, they went to the foul line 29 times versus only 15 to New Orleans. The difference of the game, obviously, was the, the differential at the foul line and, of course, the final three minutes and 19 seconds without Zion. But I'm going to go ahead and take that injured team. I think the rest of the team is going to rise to the occasion to get the job done. Golden State was you know they were a play-in team and they were the bottom play-in team the lakers when they're healthy and i'll give them you know credit they're a much tougher out so i am more impressed with new orleans's loss if that makes sense than sacramento's win and i'm going to go ahead and take the perceived value that i think is there with them on their home floor and they've dominated the kings this year uh, so I'm going to take them to get the job done in advance to the playoffs, and then we'll see what happens after that and how long they're without Zion. So I want to ask you this, Marco. Can home court be a disadvantage? Because when we look at New Orleans over the course of the last month, lose at home to OKC, lose at home to Boston, lose at home to Phoenix, lose at home to Orlando, lose at home as double-digit favorites to San Antonio, lose at home to the Lakers, so they have to play in the playing game and then lose at home in the playing game to the Lakers. That, my friend, would be six straight losses, seven in their last eight home games. And it really felt to me the last couple of home games that that pressure is wearing uh, on New Orleans. Is this a team you're comfortable? I mean, meanwhile, they went on the highway and had a great road trip, beat everybody. You know, <laughs> they beat the Warriors, yeah. Kings, uh, Portland, Phoenix. But in this building, we you can you can sense the pressure on this team you can sense the 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 weight on their shoulders without zion are they good enough well it's absolutely good question you're you're bringing your a game today in the cross examinations uh teddy with yeah. that rundown that you the, that you said um the only team in there that that you know that the loss was really ugly to me was the san antonio game Every other team you rattled off in there is a playoff team. Uh, like and I'm Kings. saying, when I say when I say playoff, I, I mean the top six, except the Lakers, which, like I said, when they're healthy, you got to admit, the Lakers aren't a play a play in caliber team. They're better than they are when they're at full strength, which, which they are now. Um, the, and that was part of my handicap the other night when I took 
New Orleans because I knew they had the mulligan and they knew they had the mulligan. So that little pressure thing of being at home, one and done, um, would have been more of a factor. The fact that they, I knew that you were kind of playing with house money. Okay, if we lose to the Lakers, we still get another home game and we'll face either Golden State or Sacramento. Now, with that said, you go, so what's different tonight? Well, I actually think because Zion's out, nobody's giving him a shot, okay? So I think there's actually less pressure on them because Zion's out. They have a built-in excuse, so to speak, if they lose tonight. And I think they can go out and just get it done. And I don't want to say, because I know the comments section will say, are you nuts? Sacramento going to be flat. It's a playoff game. No, they're not going to be flat but they might just be a little bit too comfortable after getting the news that they don't have to face Zion. Mentally, you say, hey, we just caught a break. And the fact that they had that win so easily over what is kind of their built-in rival with Golden State because of proximity in that epic seven-game series last year, I, I just think they're going to come in here just a little bit too comfortable. And I think that'll be a mistake looking back past this Pelican club in any form. Marco D'Angelo. Marco, you're staying with us. We've got some questions from the chat. First one is from UC Panda, one of our absolute most loyal listeners. Uh, UC wants to know, what about Cubs coming home off a long roadie and no day off? Uh, UC, we're not going to answer that, but Ralph Michaels has slacked me privately and will... What's the problem, Teddy? What, what is answer it? Come- Yes, yes. <laughs> we but I was had going been listening to what we were talking. I know about, we, answered we answered it. That had you not have interrupted so, me, just had you not have interrupted me, you would have heard what I was about to say. So screw you, Teddy, and stop being an idiot. Ralph Michaels <laughs> is coming on later to actually give us some TNA on that exact topic. Chase Stockton wants to know. Do either of you like the Red Sox and the Guardians under eight and a half plus 100? Marco, you go first. Uh, I actually used the under last night in the game. I did like the under, and I don't like it today. Um, staying away from that game uh, as far as a play for sure. But if I did play the game, I would be leaning over today. Teddy? So I'm not going to play overs. I'm I'm certainly not going to play many overs on early start getaway day games. They're dead nuts under games, and we've seen that. We saw it yesterday. That being said, you could have had nine and a half at the opener. You could have had nine this morning. It's eight and a half now. No way in hell I'm betting under eight and a half if I haven't bet the better number already because you missed the best of the number. Those are the type of games you just got to leave alone. If you like that side, uh, if you like that total, all right, I missed it. Come back tomorrow or come back and find another game where you like a total where the number's still there for you uh, to get involved with. Because eight and a half on a game that was nine and a half, negative expectation wager. 100%. David Havily wants to know Rangers or Tigers, Teddy? Again, I, I passed in MLB today, and this was a game I had. I mean, it was a pick em price game. My number on the game was pick em. I wasn't close to doing anything in this game. It was a two-minute look and easy pass for me. Marco. Marco, same with me. Uh, you know, if, if I'm passing like Teddy, I definitely don't like anything. Uh, you know, we generally <laughs> can find something to get some action out there, and it wasn't there. Okay, Marco D'Angelo, thanks for joining us, brother. Good luck in the NBA playoffs. I know you'll kill it. Same with the NHL playoffs. We absolutely love having you on. Now, Teddy, we have one last question, and it's a me you question with a great story. David Havley, the same gentleman, wants to know, where did you get your blazer? I like that style. So um, a long time ago, Teddy, uh, I came to Vegas, and Teddy asked me to take him shopping. Legit. He's like, Prez, I have no style. Can you take me shopping and help me pick out clothes? Teddy, how did that day go? So we all, what we spent, I mean, we went nuts. We went a bunch of clothes. That was how long ago, Lawrence? Maybe God, eight, six, ten seven years ago. years ago? Yeah. Here's the irony. Those are my new clothes still. Like, I think of them, oh, oh, yeah, oh, yeah, there's that new shirt I got. It's a seven years old. We need to do it again. But this wasn't a jacket we got that day. I, I don't remember, that, but uh, we got a bunch of blazers, a bunch of pants. You got those Joe's jeans. Joe jeans are spectacular. Yeah. 
and those shoes that you still wear every time I see. Those are you. my new shoes. They're my. Do you, <laughs> those do you are want my to know clothes, the clothes, I don't. I'm yeah. not a. I'm not a guy that goes shopping ever. Okay, I have no style. I don't care. All I want is something on me that fits. Okay, and uh, Lawrence, you're in town. Come on, you got a little bit. Yeah, let's go. Um, the, literally, those are my new. I mean, like I, Kara buys me every once in a while something to fit in, but me shopping myself by myself. Not in this lifetime, dude. It doesn't happen. And, it was and, like and if I did, you six, wouldn't want what I came on air with. It was like <laughs> six hours at the premium outlet mall in Vegas. And the irony of the entire uh, conversation is Teddy comes on to Wager Talk today looking great. And I come on in a T-shirt, yet I'm the one that helps him with style. Teddy, do you have any quick thoughts on the Mavs Clippers series? Swiss 84 wants to know. I have quick thoughts on it. I did a big game breakdown on the Mavs Clippers series. I believe on Monday, you can see that solo video on Wager Talk TV on YouTube. I've also written up <coughs> a, a play for that game. It's a client play for me. It's a, I post it as a free play as well. Just visit my page, wt.buzz backslash TC, and you can read my written analysis for Mavs Clippers round one, the full series. and. Yeah, spoiler alert. I like Dallas. Chris Gell 25 says, stay fresh, Teddy. And that suggests to me that we have another shopping outing coming up. <laughs> and I'm looking, it's going to be fun, dude. We should do it. Look, guys, I'm taking Teddy. I called Teddy a few nights ago. I am taking him and his way better than him wife uh, to the dead and company on May 17th. Perhaps the next day we'll go shopping. Brother, what did we learn in the wonderful world of sports betting? This much I know. I, is, that, is that a Friday night, Perez, or is that a Thursday yes. night? Friday night. Yeah. Okay, if it's Friday, I was going to say, if it's Thursday night, I ain't doing the show on Friday morning. Uh, that being said, let's talk about what we learned. And we have to talk. Now we have conclusion. We talked a little bit about the allegations against John Tay Porter for the Toronto Raptors. Now we have a conclusion. And it happened quickly, and it happened appropriately. Obviously, if you're not familiar with the story, John Day Porter was involved in some suspicious wagering, including someone placing an $80,000 same-game parlay <laughs> that featured under on all of his stats that would have won $1.1 million had he played it, uh, had, had it uh, ended up cashing, however, got flagged. And, of course, that was a game that Porter played only three minutes before leaving with an illness. The bet was not paid from DraftKings. So the investigation re revealed, the official investigation revealed that Porter placed at least 13 bets on NBA games using a uh, friend's betting account. League said that uh, he bet that the wagers ranged from $15 to $22,000, a total of 54 grand, and he won a total of 76 grand. So a net of uh, close to $22,000. None of the bets, that the NBA official investigation found were involved in any game where Porter played. Three of the bets, by the way, were parlays, including a bet on the Raptors to lose, but all three of those parlay bets lost. Now, the Action Network reported that Porter placed over a 1,000 bets on his FanDuel account, uh, which is a pretty significant number for a guy who's not supposed to be betting at all. Now, obviously, this situation, A, was caught very quickly, B, was resolved very quickly, and C, they nailed it, all right? This was an amateur operation, all right? Clearly, it was guys that didn't know a lot about what the guys behind the counter are going to look for, what's going to get you flagged. Amateur operation, the guy got caught, he deserves the ban, plain and simple. The NBA got it right, the watchdogs got it right, and this is legalized, regulated sports betting working. Well done, NBA. Well done, yeah. Adam Silver. Back to you, Mr. Prince. Yeah, you know, I mean, listen, we've spoken a lot this year about are these games fixed? Are these players betting on it? And you and I have said since day one that the games aren't fixed. Um, Obviously, here you have a situation where there was a fix in the sense that he bet all these unders on him, and then he stepped away from the game one and a half, two minutes in. The point you and I have been making all along is 
they catch this stuff and they catch yes. it almost every single time. My question to you, Teddy, is take some of the top young guys, uh, Shay, uh, Victor, you know, even G Giannis. Are they getting a lifetime ban if they're yeah, the ones oh, caught? Absolutely. Uh, for sure. This is not just a, okay, let's, let's, let's punish Jante Porter because he's someone that nobody knows. Okay. Cause he's a fringe player. And the reality is that a fringe player is more likely to say, Hey, I could sure use 80 grand or a hundred grand to vet right. this parlay than a uh, guy who's making as much money as the, uh, as the, the top stars in the league are. But, this is a big deal for the NBA with all the buzz about, you know, these games are fixed. Da, 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 da. They have to come out and put a stern punishment on anyone that gets busted. And they did. They kicked them out of the league. They kicked them out of the league forever. And that's the right punishment. It would happen. But again, it would happen to the, any star. Even if it was, yeah. if it was LeBron, they would kick LeBron out of the league that much. I believe I really do. I, I want so badly to like see him, you know, like, I mean, this guy has destroyed his life for nothing. Ralph Michaels joining us, everyone. Ralph, welcome to Wager Talk today. How are you? Doing great. I am uh, sitting at Kelly's desk. I had to go through her stuff and she does have a pen. So thank you, Kelly, for <laughs> making sure that's here for well, me. Well, Ralph, Ralph, um, speaking of which, I went to the mailbox and I now have a pen. Thank you for sending me a pen and it's a really good quality pen. So I'm I'm really appreciative of that, man. They were, I mean, that was the one thing I like because I use them all the time and I actually am so accustomed to using them that I run out of my pen, I go and get another pen and I still use it. So yeah. thank you, President. But it is a high quality pen. Let's get into it. Uh, listen, NHL tonight is tough. I was on puck time. I really don't love anything. I personally would suggest to people to take the Grand Salami over the total tonight. That would be my only NHL recommendation. You've got one for us on Minnesota, minus 145 against Seattle. Tell us why. Well, Prez, when you look at game number two in the NHL, Home favorites have actually covered 67% since 2015. Now, it's not a huge number because the average line is minus 188. But I look at Minnesota and I look at the crack and, and look at how they finished. Minnesota's gone four and four their last eight games. They're off back-to-back -back wins, including a nice win against the Kings. Their four losses were at as a dog of plus 155, a dog of plus 165, a dog of plus 160 and a dog of plus 150. So all four losses were as a sizable dog. At home or against teams that have a losing record, Minnesota has crushed down the stretch. They've gone 12 and one against teams with a losing record. They've won 10 straight games by an average of 2.5 goals per game. They're 2 and 0 against this team this year. They beat them 3 to nothing and and uh, five to two, so an eight to two collective score, and they really do want to send Flurry out with a finish. Now he's a free agent; it not necessarily means he's going to leave. But to me, I look at the situation: a team playing well against a Seattle team that's lost their last four games of the year, a team that played their last four games on the road, the Minnesota Wild now at home in front of their home fans. And remember, this Wild team has been a playoff team every year since 2018 or 19. So I do think there is value in the Minnesota Wild tonight. Minnesota Wild, we've seen them take the money. I'm seeing as high as minus 170 in some spots if you like the Wild. And that's leading indicator books, by the way. So if you like the Wild, I'd get onto them sooner rather than later. Ralph. You have not one, not two, but three charts that you've put together, including one that we just talked about with Marco. Where do you Thank want to you. go? Okay. Let, let's let's go and finish up the Marco segment. You know, Marco was talking about he he often brings up teams off a long road trip, the first game back home. And Steve and I have done a couple segments on this as well in both uh, in baseball. And I want to tell you this distinct difference. When I went to the database, 
when teams are off a road trip of at least five games and they have no rest, it is actually break even. It is a negative 0.1 return on investment, ROI percentage. Why? Because, listen, the Cubs played at Arizona yesterday. They played at 340 Pacific time. So that's 540 Central time, basically almost their regular start time. They fly home, they get off the plane, they start the next day, and they're in the same routine. But when you look at teams off a long road trip with rest of more than one day, they're actually a negative 6.5% ROI. You're out of your routine, you take care of the kids, you pay your bills, you have that day off to, to get reaccustomed to your home life. So fading a team off a long road trip is a positive with a day of rest, but without a day of rest, it's basically a 50 50. That's that's great info, Ralph. And it really it, it makes it makes sense to me. The one that I'm interested in, and of course, <laughs> uh, is when a team comes back off a low trip or off a long road trip, wins that first game. It's the second game that uh, I always find that that's the spot that 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 I that stands out in my mind is the team came back, did what they were supposed to do. And then the, the exhale comes. Uh, maybe we'll talk about that next time if you have time for a chart of that particular <laughs> scenario, which I have no idea how you're going to chart. So good luck with them. I well, know there's a way to do it, uh, but it's not. A thing you know what, Teddy? Honest. If we have a minute after I do the two NBA charts, I'll just need 30 seconds to go to the database. I can actually give you that number off a long road trip. You win the first game home. What happens in the second game? So, yes, if we, if we have the extra time after the NBA segments, I will run those numbers for you real quick. Sweet. Well, let's talk some NBA. Uh, let's throw a chart up. Both of these charts, I think you guys are both going to agree. When a chart makes sense to every degree and it keeps getting worse or keeps getting better as you progress, to me, that's the most important chart. And let's talk zigzag. Uh, I, I said this joke to Kelly. Kelly and uh, Jeff and I did a TNA video on Wager Talk TV. And this is from the free Wager Talk NBA playoff guide on my homepage or on Jeff's page. So wt.buzz backslash rm or wt.buzz backslash jms. Take a look. Now, this is round one specific. Okay, so if you play every team off a loss in the playoffs since 2017, I did negate the bubble season of 2019-2020, you have gone 46.8% the next day. So again, off a loss means nothing in the NBA playoffs now. The zigzag used to work in the 1990s where you're playing teams off a loss. But let's look at the next level. If you play a team off a home loss, they are 55.7%. If you are playing a team off a home loss as a favorite, they are 65%. And when you are playing off a team off a loss as a favorite at home of minus five or higher, those teams have gone 71% against the spread. So teams off a loss, 47%, actually a negative. Teams off a home loss, 56%. Off a loss as a home favorite, 65, or off a loss as a big home favorite, 71% against the spread. So to me, every parameter has gotten a little bit stronger. Those are the types of charts I love to share with our viewers. And that chart, again, it makes sense on paper. It makes sense in our minds. And what does it tell us? It tells us that any of, these, uh, any of the bigger home favorites that lose game one, they may well be bet on in game two. Certainly the math shows that way. And that's the one element of the zigzag that has actually been profitable. The elite teams, the good teams, the bigger favorites off that game one home loss or off a home loss as chalk. And that includes, I love the teams that lose game five at home. And you can back them as right game six as well. Uh, those tend to be really profitable wagers. What else you got chart wise for us, Ralph, today? Well, let's look at home favorites by round. Remember last week we talked about totals in the playoffs and looking at the totals. Well, I'm surprised that these home favorite numbers are basically the same thing. Every scenario gets a little bit worse. 
home favorites in round one. It doesn't matter what seed you are. If you're a home favorite in round one, this goes back to 2017 again and excludes the bubble year, have cashed 59.3%. Wow, yeah, think about it. If you bet every home favorite in round one, you have cashed 59.3%. In round two, home favorites have cashed 54.7%. The competition is much tighter. You do not have the 1-8 seeds. You do not have the 2-7 seeds. Round three and round four, folks, it doesn't matter if you're a home favorite or not. They're exactly 50% going 33 and 33 ATS. So what are we taking out of this? Do look for those spots to play the home favorites in round number one of the NBA playoffs. Sure. And, of course, the other thing this chart tells us is that the teams that survive in advance to round two, round three, and the finals, those teams tend to be better than the average playoff team when it comes to competing and winning games on the road. The weaker entrants on the highway tend to get eliminated in the first round. Agree, Ralph? I do, Teddy, and that's the one thing that I think is very important. I think people look at seeding way too much, and they think, oh, the team is a six seed or a seven seed or an eight seed. Well, listen, if you've played a playoff series and you knocked off a number one, two, or three seed, are you really a number six, number seven, or eight seed? So you have to start getting rid of the context of what the seeds are after that initial round. Ralph, my we got one more man. chance. Oh, sorry. Go we ahead, Daddy. I, I am going to have to turn and take 30 seconds if you guys want to take one chat room question, and I am going to go ahead and uh, run those numbers for Teddy. Road teams off. A long road trip, second home game back. Perfect. Ralph, did we, well, did we do the zigzag? Uh, did we do the zigzag chart yet? For oh my one? God, we, we, Teddy, do you not listen to the show, Teddy? No, no, no. Oh my I God, do. what is going on I, with you? What's wrong with I you, added, Teddy? I added one more, Teddy. I added, I added the chart just to show you off a loss, off a home loss, and off a loss as a home favorite in the later rounds. Dan, if you can throw that up. So remember when we were talking about teams off a loss. We only talked about round one in the big chart. Round two off a loss, take a look. It doesn't matter what round you win. There's nothing much positive. Home teams off a home loss, round two break even, round three positive. Off a loss as a home favorite, leaning to the positive end, and off a loss as a home favorite of five or more. Later on, basically a break even if you look at it so i just wanted to show you the comparison and i will throw this on twitter and it uh i will throw that on twitter but it does show you that the scenarios are not the same there's some positives and certain negatives but you don't find the latter the latter effect that you get from round one well my sure and of course you. lawrence yes teddy I yes did teddy pay attention to what ralph was saying that's why i knew they had another chart to go through before he went and that's what that was my job to make sure that he got through all of his information. So yeah, I was paying attention to what he was saying. Okay, that's Teddy, congratulations, brother. Uh, Let's give Ralph Roger a minute to Long, do that. And Lawrence, Roger Long, Long asks a question: Does more defense in the playoffs correlate to more unders? That that's that's a great question. I will say it's baked into the line. I'm not looking to bet under simply because we're going to see more defense in the playoffs. Uh, do you have any thoughts on that? So in the first round, the first two games tend to be on that. They have a long-term trend to the under, I believe. Um, obviously after a long regular season, once you get that playoff level defensive intensity, you expect initially the first couple of games to be relatively low scoring. In addition, as series progress, once you start getting to games five, game six, and game seven in particular, six and seven of long-term strong cracker to the under, and five's not that far away. So uh, the longer a series goes, we tend to look for unders in the later games. That's the two broader trends that I can speak for. And much of that info is based on Ralph Michaels' charts. Ralph? It, Ralph, are you, you ready? Know, Ted, I, I am, Teddy. So I, I ran the numbers, and I did at least five road games. You come home off the, ro off the road trip, you win your first home game, and you're playing another yep. game. I went back since 2013. 
with no rest, Teddy, you are down 55 units minus 2.4% ROI. With one day rest, you're minus 6.2% ROI. And then with two days rest, there's only five games. So, uh, you know, it's it's unlikely you're going to have a day of rest between that first and second home game. But looking at all the numbers collectively since 2013, teams off a long road trip that won that home first home game are minus 6.6% ROI. So that is a very good thought, Teddy. I'm going to actually save that trend and put it in my database. Uh, and then we can also get cute. Remember, I just ran basic home numbers, looking at how they did if they won as a home dog or looking if they're a home dog or a home favorite after that first win back. So I will clearly share any data I have with you to make those numbers even stronger. But uh, a great thought by you, Teddy. Well, thanks for joining us, man. You really put a lot of work into today's show. It's so appreciated. What do you have to promote? Well, M- MLB, seven straight winners. I do have a play tonight. Nice. I'm going for play number eight. So a uh, uh, nice start to the MLB season. Uh, I appreciate everyone that's been on board. I was with you, Prez, last night. I uh, I had the LA Angels, and I saw the score four to three. I didn't want to watch the ninth inning, and it's a nice surprise when you when you're trailing <laughs> four to three going in. Now, you know, it's one of those games that I'm like, Hit myself in the head. I should have used them first five. They were up two to one after five. That's what I was they gave thinking. A couple. But Teddy, I'll tell you what, you know, I, I read the Tampa Bay paper after, and they are just ripping their closer. Their bullpen, you talked about it. Their bullpen on the back end is just an absolute train wreck, and they blew another lead last night, yeah. giving up two in the ninth. So certainly agree with you on the Rays right now. They are not a team, especially as a favorite, you want to be playing. Well, Michaels, thanks, brother. Guys, there will be no penalty uh, box today. There will be no daily presidential address. The only thing I would bet in hockey is the over and the grand salami. A couple of promos to give out, and then we'll end the show with Teddy's big game breakdown. First off, we have a site-wide special. Get 10 days of picks for the cost of seven. It's $99, and you get 10 days of picks. Uh, No coupon code required for that and you can use it for any single handicapper next i want to make mention about the special that teddy and i are doing and then also teddy i'm going to tell you what i will be doing as well uh that will affect us so uh basically teddy's nba playoffs have been ridiculous uh, ridiculous for yours his nba season is unbelievable teddy's nba is money and my nhl as you all know is ridiculous i won again i'm on a six and oh run 13 and two coming into the playoffs you can buy teddy's nba playoffs and my nhl playoffs together uh with 358 dollars that's a huge savings um and it's really we're going to make you a lot of money but teddy what i'm going to do starting on saturday is I'm going to combine my NHL and your NBA on a daily basis throughout the playoffs. So if you can separate your NBA play, not do it in an all-access, just separate the NBA play, I'll separate my NHL play. I have access to the back end of Wager Talk as I am one of the owners, and I will combine them every single day so that all our listeners, viewers, and clients can follow our NB, your NBA and my NHL together. Uh, so I just wanted to make mention of that. Brother, it's time for your big game breakdown, and then just take us home. I'm not required anymore. Sure, big game breakdown for Thursday. Let's talk a little NFL draft. And I'll tell you flat out, the good stuff that you want to bet in the NFL draft is juiced, and it's only going to get more juiced. So if you want to bet it, I bet it now. And this is not the time that I'm looking for plus prices at all. The day before the draft, maybe, (laughs) that's when the overreactions are there. But this time is a time to lay the juice. So let's talk about Brian Thomas, the LSU wide receiver. His over-under draft position, 16 and a half. There are three clear stud wide receivers at the top of the draft. They're all going to be top 10 picks. Marvin Harrison Jr., he's been linked to Arizona at number four, the kid out of Ohio State. Malik Neighbors uh, from LSU linked to the Giants at six. Romeo Duzne linked to the Bears at number nine, the kid out of Washington. All three of those guys have superstar potential, no question. 
But then there's a drop off and potentially a big drop off. Who do we got? We got Xavier Worthy from Texas. We got a Donnie Mitchell from Texas, Lad McConkey from Georgia, and Brian Thomas. The Steelers at 20 need a wide receiver, maybe Miami at 21. The 14 Saints, 15 Colts, 16 Eagles. None of those needs, in my opinion, none of the teams are teams with a huge need at wide receiver. So look, I mean, DK was at over minus 200, over 16 and a half draft position, the under minus 160. This line has already been bet. That being said, it could close over minus 400 wouldn't shock me. This isn't a money line bet, or this is a money line bet. It's not a point spread. The extra juice can't turn a winner into a loser. I don't think Thomas goes in the top 16 and doesn't get in the top 16. You win, period. This is Chalkworth Lane. There's your big game breakdown. Brian Thomas over draft position 16 and a half. And that's going to wrap it for the Thursday edition of Wager Talk Today. Thank you so much for taking time out of your busy day to spend with Prez and I and our guests right here on Wager Talk TV. We appreciate the likes. We appreciate the follows. We appreciate the comments very, very much. Best of luck. Enjoy the games. We'll see you guys tomorrow.